Welcome to this video on the composition of mixtures. So here we have a little diagram showing just how we can break matter apart into different categories. And so we see our pure substances on the right and we see our mixtures on the left. And so we're gonna focus on that mixture side. So if we know that the substance has variable composition, um, sometimes that might not be something that we can tell just looking at it. We might have to do some analysis and work on that or do some separation of the mixture in order to find that out. If we see that the mixture has distinguishable parts, it would be heterogeneous. And so that one's going to be one we can see different parts in it. And if it's uniform throughout, then it's homogeneous. And it's important to know that a pure substance and homogeneous mixture sometimes are really hard to tell apart from one another if we're just looking at them. Um, another thing that you need to think about is the fact that heterogeneous uh, mixtures, sometimes these are not things that we can tell just visually looking at them. So one example is blood. Blood has all sorts of different components, but we wouldn't necessarily know that if we didn't use microscopy. And so sometimes that scale is going to tell us different things. So we have red blood cells and white blood cells and platelets and all sorts of other stuff, plasma that are all in there. And so it's actually a heterogeneous mixture. A homogeneous mixture, um, we have a couple other terms that we a lot of times associate with this. So one of them is that it's a solution, okay? So think of your aqueous solutions. So that's another word for it. And another one that we see if we're working with metals are alloys, and so those are metal mixtures. Now the interesting thing is we can go between a mixture and a pure substance. So we can go from a mixture to a pure substance using physical properties or physical changes. And so we can um, separate a mixture or mixtures using physical properties or changes. I'll say physical processes. We're gonna take a look at a couple examples of that in this video. The other thing is sometimes we can chemically analyze what's going on in, the, in a mixture. And so we can use both physical properties and we can use chemical understanding in order to be able to find out more about our mixture. So let's take a look at some physical properties. So what physical properties can we use to identify substances? Um, a lot of times we use temperature points, so boiling point, melting point, freezing point. We can use the state of matter under certain conditions. And so a lot of times we'll look at those changes, those phase changes that happen, when do they happen, and how are they happening. Uh, we can like, take a look at density. And so with density, remember that density is mass divided by volume. So that's gonna be in units for us usually of grams per milliliter or in units of grams per cubic centimeter. Um, please just remember, just for your reference, that one milliliter is equal to one cubic centimeter. That's gonna come in handy in some other places. The last ones, I just kind of threw some other things in there. Magnetism, I'm going to say crystal structure maybe would be better than size. Okay, and then I have molecular size, so maybe both. Um, color, I know they always say color is not a good one, but I will tell you I think that we use it a lot, and so we have to be very careful with color sometimes, but sometimes color will indicate quite a bit to us. So then how do we go about separating physical, um, physically separating a mixture? Okay, so we're gonna use these physical processes. So the first one is distillation. We can separate two liquids using differences and boiling point. We also use this to purify water. To make that distilled water, okay. Um, 
So DH2O is my shorthand for that. And so we'll pull out all of those different ions and things that are dissolved in there by using a distillation process. So we can use that for more than just liquids, but I think liquids are a good example. Filtration we usually use to separate a, an insoluble solid from a liquid. And so there's a variety of different ways that we use that in the lab. Chromatography, I think it's a little more complex than this, but I think of it separating substances using particle size. And there's a variety of ways that we can go about doing that. Um, there's some other things. If you've done any electrophoresis, we actually use that to separate particles from or substances according to particle size. And so that may happen. Um, and then just various ways to separate solids and water using heat or evaporation. I think we use that a ton in chemistry, but it's not one of those really fancy ways of separating things out. But I always like to mention that because it's something that I think we use quite a bit. Okay, so on this page, let's take a look at some of these examples. So on the left here, we actually have filtration. Maybe you've already done a lab that looks like this. I know I do this with my first year chems where we're going to make some lead chloride and then we're going to um, go ahead and filter out that, that solid, the precipitate that forms from the rest of the ions in that aqueous solution. And we analyze that. In the top right one, we are looking at distillation. This is a pretty... <laughs> pretty fancy way of looking at this, but basically we have these two liquids that are in the chamber right here, um, and we want to separate those, so we bring it up to a boiling point for the substance that has the lower boiling point, and then it's going to evaporate up, and then it condenses back in, and we collect that over on this side. And they use this to make our grain alcohols um, and a variety of other different things, so they'll separate out some of the water from the green alcohol using distillation. And then in this one down below, this is actually chromatography. Okay, and so we have this little dot of dye or ink And we put it into some sort of a liquid down below here. Um, could be chromatography solvent, could be water, who knows. And then what happens is it separates out these molecules. And so the molecules, these are going to be the smallest molecule. Um, size and these ones down here are going to be the largest molecule. MLQ is my shorthand for molecule. It's a little sloppy there. Um, and so we can separate those out by the size of those molecules and then we can analyze a little bit more information about that. Another way that we can analyze a mixture or the components of a mixture is to actually use chemistry. And so there's a lab that I oftentimes like to do that is similar to this. And so we're going to take some nitric acid and add it in with a copper alloy. It's going to then chemically react. And we can take this substance down at the very bottom. We see this, this uh, blue color that starts to form. Like I said, color is something that's maybe an indicator for us. And so that indicates that we have some copper ions in there. And then we can further do some analysis to find out how much copper, okay? So we can determine um, how much copper. using some chemical analysis. All of these are really useful tools to chemists and we will be using quite a few of them in lab throughout the year.